What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new UE4 tutorial series. This tutorial series is going to be based and starting in Unreal Engine 4.24.2 I believe, but of course anything in 4.24 uh, in general should work. And throughout this uh, tutorial series, by the way, we will be uh, doing our best to continually update to the latest Unreal Engine version. But we're going to be uh, today starting with beginning our project for a first-person shooter game. Now, uh, with a first-person shooter game, there's a, uh, a lot of features and a lot of different mechanics that you could put into it. And I can't promise that I'll have everything. But if you guys have anything that you want to learn or know about, put that in the comment section or link to my Discord server in the description. You can talk to me there or anyone else and ask for help throughout the series or just any recommendations uh, you may have. But let's get started with this and creating a new project. I already have it up here that we'll create a new project and it's pretty straightforward how we're going to start with our project. We're going to go uh, pick the category as a game because that's of course the kind of project that we're going to be making. And then we're going to want to do <coughs> excuse me uh, we're going to want to do a third person uh, project. Now, uh, you're going to create the project, and we're going to start this in Blueprints. Do this in Blueprints. If you want to add C++ later, do that. Do that as you will. Uh, and all this, uh, all these settings that I have here are what they should look like. So Blueprint, maximum quality, ray tracing disabled, uh, desktop consoles, the platform, and with starter content. Now I'm just going to call this uh, FPS series, and I'm going to put that in a different folder, and we're going to create that project, and uh, this project, since it's a, a new project depending on how long, uh, or how, how good your computer is, or any number of factors, um, might take a second to start up, but uh, we'll cut to whenever the project is opened. All right, so the project is opened, and uh, we're going to close out of that there. And so now you're given, if you're not familiar with this, you're given a third-person character with very minimal functionality, walking around uh, movement free from the camera, uh, camera movement, jumping, and that's it. No sprinting, no picking anything up. There's nothing in to interact with. And even if you put something in the world or whatever, uh, there's going to be no mechanics, no functions. And this is the only character that we have. So this is okay, and we like the animations a little bit, and, and the character is what we're going to be using. Um, but we're looking for a first person, not a third person. So there's a lot we need to do here, but before we we really uh, uh, do anything, we need to also have a few other assets in place. So one of the assets in place that you're going to want to grab, if you go to the marketplace, it's going to be the animation starter pack, pretty standard, probably seen it in some of my other tutorials and maybe other tutorials that you've watched or just seen in the marketplace, completely free. And you're just going to want to add that to your project, and that's going to provide the animations, uh, basic animations. Nothing is going to look the best. So keep in mind with this series that we're not going for, like, the best of the best. We're really covering functionality and programming. Looks are completely secondary. Um, so if, if it doesn't look the best, uh, I'm sorry, um, but I'm not an artist, and I've kind of given up on trying to make my... Uh, my tutorial look really good uh, with like perfect matching animations and all that stuff and really just focusing on getting you guys uh, the knowledge of programming or any other engine functionality that you guys need to have and uh, and let the let the artists and animators and all that fun stuff handle their part uh, if, if they want to teach that. So, so we've got this character and we're actually not going to be using this guy so um, uh, actually, actually, you know what? We can use him, and um, for that, we're actually going to create a new folder, though, just to be organized in our content folder. So you can right-click or add new and create a new folder called uh, Blueprints. And uh, within that, I'm also going to make another new folder called uh, Player... 
characters and this is where you can put any of your player characters and it's nice whenever you're whether you're working on your own or with other people to stay organized and uh, I've heard that for years in life and in programming and it took me a little too long to realize that it's true because if you're organized and you just have everything in one place all your 2D assets in one place, all your 3D assets in their uh, naming conventions and all that stuff. It's very easy to just very smoothly go from uh, asset to asset or blueprint, blueprint to blueprint, whatever you're trying to find or whatever you're trying to use. If you're if you follow your naming conventions and your organization, makes your life a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna try to hopefully slowly teach you guys some organization etiquette through along the way. Not that I'm the best either. So we're going to create, um, we're actually, we're not going to create anything. We're going to uh, click this button right here that's show or hide the sources panel. Um, and we're going to go over to uh, third person uh, blueprint, blueprints. And uh, we're just going to copy this over to our player character folder and uh, copy there. Okay. And now we're just going to call this player character. And I'll call it uh, BP underscore uh, player character. Okay. <clears throat> so now within this, we have a few things that are good for you guys to learn, but aren't the biggest necessity per se starting out because these are a lot of things that are kind of just one and done uh, and some of these you won't need at all so if you're not doing VR or anything you don't really need that and if you're not um, using a video game controller uh, you you don't need uh, this as well so these are pretty basic functions and features uh, we'll get back to what these nodes are uh, but uh, for now, basically, this is turning your camera uh, left and right, and this is moving your camera up and down. So this is getting the actual trigger from your mouse, and then this is applying the movement uh, and adding a pitch input to, to your pawn controller, which at that point the controller is um, being controlled right here use pawn control rotation this uh, camera boom which is controlling your camera is taking whatever small movement that you have from your mouse and and adding that to your rotation which is then how you get mouse rotate mouse movement um, uh, or camera movement as a result of moving your mouse so it's pretty basic there's there's no there's nothing super in-depth about that jump kind of the same thing uh, jump jumps and we'll uh, probably cover some different and more better jumping later on so we'll get back to this and then the movement input kind of also the just the same thing it's getting move forward which is uh, uh, we'll obviously take a look at the inputs later so I can better explain this but it's getting W or S and uh, accord, uh, accordingly giving a positive or negative value to tell it to go forward or backward same thing with right. Um, D is going to be your positive value, and A is going to be your negative value. W is going to be your positive value. S is going to be your negative value when we're talking about moving back and forward. But either way, it's just uh, adding that to your character um, and and uh, and rotating them um, when you when you move left and right. Uh, it's it's rotating the character freely from the camera. And then, of course, when you move uh, forward, it just moves forward in, in, in relativity to your camera as well. So that's really all we have here, and that's all we're going to do for now. So the next thing that we want to actually set up is the better animations, because we're going to be holding guns and stuff and, and, and picking stuff up. So let's actually change the animations that we're using. So we imported a pack called Anim Starter Pack. Now this animation starter pack, if you're not aware, has a lot of uh, rifle and pistol basic animations. There's not a ton, and once again, they're not like super specific. They're very basic as well. 
So pretty much, oh, apparently, and maybe they added a shotgun as well. And so, uh, like jumping, some uh, running, proning, um, reloading, iron iron sights, just a various set of m movement um, that you can obviously take a look at if you're more interested in each one of these. Now, they do come with a character that it, it is able to use and display those animations, and it also comes with an animation blueprint as well. Now, this animation blueprint is a lot, uh, uh, a lot more complicated than we need it to be because we don't actually need all the features that it provides. Actually, I believe, or actually, no, this one is the simpler one. Uh, never mind. So, either way, we actually don't need this, um, this animation graph. But it is a good point of reference if you mess up uh, and you want to go back and look at something. Great point of reference. Go take a look and see what you can uh, we can do to possibly fix that but what I'm gonna do is actually uh, uh, create or go into uh, the animation class for this um, and or actually uh, not the animation class excuse me the uh, the mesh for this character because um, we're gonna just uh, use the mesh that comes actually we shouldn't need to I just realized we shouldn't need to because it's the same thing. So we're just going to actually create... Um, let me double check that all the animations... No, the animations are not there. Okay, so we are going to change the mess because this will just this will just make it easy, easier. I cannot speak today. Make sure you change your mesh to the other SK mannequin because you should only have two in here unless you've added some other assets. And if you're confused on to which one you should add, make sure it's the one down here on the path. Uh, it should say animation starter pack UE4 mannequin mesh. And so that's the one that we're going to want to pick because it's going to use the animations um, that it's it's already going to be targeted to all these animations and it'll just make, us, make it easier on us. So now uh, what we're going to do is set up the animation blueprint for a character. And to do that, we're going to once again stay organized. So make a new folder in your content uh, root folder called animation. Uh, I should have called it animations, but it's it's fine. And um, we're going to uh, create a subfolder called, uh, uh, let's see, um, player animations. And then I'm going to create within this a, um, and by the way, just, just for point of reference, just to keep reminding you, I uh, anyone a little bit lost. I am right-clicking here to pop up this menu, um, or you can add new if that's uh, a bit easier for you to remember uh, or just use. But I'm right-clicking, and we're going to go animation, animation blueprint, and make sure you target this to your uh, UE4 SK mannequin mesh that's coming from the animation starter pack, because that's the one that's going to be targeted to all those animations. So now we're just going to call this, um, well, it's going to kick us out of the naming convention because it wanted to autosave. Uh, anim BP, let's say anim underscore BP underscore uh, player character. And now we have a completely empty animation uh, graph. We have an event graph and an animation graph, as I mentioned before. So first of all, let's start with the animation graph. And with the animation graph, this is going to, uh, there's going to be um, kind of two main areas you're going to be working on uh, in the animation blueprint as a whole. Like I said, the animation graph and the event graph. And most of it pro is most likely going to take place in the animation graph because that's where you're going to actually put your animations and all those animations and the uh, uh, um, I'm blanking on the word the way that they uh, in interact with each other rather is all handled through this so you have to start with a state machine start a new state machine and this is where uh, all those paths are going to happen. So just connect this little person to this little person. These are just called the animation pose uh, 
lines. That's what this one's called. And double click on the state machine, and it opens up an uh, kind of like a uh, a subgraph. And entry is pretty much like where like on start. What's the first animation I go to? So we're just gonna drag off of this and add a state and create an idle animation. Now, this idle animation can be whatever you want. So if you want it to be like hands by the side or whatever, whatever you want it to be, uh, make an idle animation. But for now, we're just going to use, um, let's see, where is it? Idle rifle iron sights for now. And we're going to do some more animation cleanup and some more animation work throughout this entire series. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But uh, if you compile that, immediately, uh, not many nodes placed down or work done, and he's already thrown into that automatic idle animation. But of course, if we walked around or did anything with this specific character, uh, nothing, nothing's going to happen. And I don't see... <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna delete this third person character and use our game uh, use our network player start. Um, actually, no, we're not. We're gonna delete that as well and drag in a player start here, over from uh, the side. And if you can't find it, just type in player start over here. Um, but drag that in the world, and then I'm going to now grab since this window apparently is not up. Go to <laughs> Go to Window and go to World Settings, and you're going to want to use this quite often as well. And to use your character, because we're going to we're gonna test out this character, demonstrate that just because we have this animation here, uh, it's going to just stay on the animation. But to use your actual character, um, you've, uh, you drag in the player start wherever you want the player to start, and you have to use a game mode. Now, we have a game mode, and we could create a new one, but it's pretty easy just to use... The third person game mode and just modify that because it's uh, it's not going to be used for anything besides what we want it to be used for and then your default pawn class is pretty much whatever your player character or controllable uh, character is going to be whether it's whether it's your uh, a car or an animal or creature or uh, or human or whatever your player character that your uh, uh, that your player of the game is going to be possessing this is what it needs to be, at least for the start. Or, of course, whatever you uh, want to use it in as utility for testing. So we're just going to pick our BP player character and hit play. And, uh, well, actually now, we do, there's no animation, and I know exactly why. And that's because, well, the, and this is still a good ex representation that, you know, every animation needs uh, a path and... Um, and a, a a list of parameters to tell it when and when not to do something because of course even if it's just blank it's still just going to play a blank animation so we need to go back into our character go to mesh go to anim class and select the one that you made whatever you called it if you didn't call it what i called it that's fine just know what you called it and select that Compile, and now you can see the animation is no longer in T-Pose, and if we play, it's no longer in T-Pose. Now this animation will play, but once again, still we're just going to be walking around in this, and this is not at all what we want. So how do we fix that? How do we get movement going? Well, we need to make what's called a blend space. In a blend space, if you right-click here, go to Animation, and create a blend space out of the right skeleton. Um, Let's see, uh, BS underscore, uh, let's see, we'll just say um, rifle movement, because we're just going to use this, uh, all these animations are going to be rifle based. Uh, a blend space takes a bunch of different animations uh, and puts them on a, a grid and allows you to blend between them in real time based off of just an XYZ value that you kind of give an imaginary dot and it goes on that imaginary grid and wherever that animation is, it blends between that the closest animation on that grid and the other surrounding animations on that grid to give a, a blended effect between animations. And this is 
working or this works great for many other many many different uses like flying uh, or, or or movement in this case we're going to be using movement and walking uh, but anything from uh, 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 simply just uh, like a, a jump animation if you had a linear blend space or moving if you're doing any sort of like 3d movement of course so we're gonna grab the animations that we need and we need a uh, uh, honestly not many animations we really just need four so we're gonna have walk backwards and actually hold on before we do that let's set up let's set up the um uh, a scale for this so our first scale here is going to be direction and uh the axis value is going to determine two things a the the kind of the grid size and the grid is pretty uh um, man, I'm blanking on all my words. It's pretty um, imaginary. It's very, it's it's com completely uh, imaginary. You don't really need to worry about the exact grid. It's more about the actual variables and numbers per se. And in this case, since direction is what we're talking about, we're just going to do negative 180 and 180 because that's just kind of far left and far right, pretty much. So uh, we're going to keep the grid division at four and move on to the vertical axis, which we're going to call speed. And this is where we start to zero and go to 600. My num lock wasn't on. <laughs> 600. And that's going to be, it, like I said, m mainly paying attention to your variables. We're going to be using 600 as our speed because we're going to be referencing that variable as to our speed as a character is going to set the uh, this is going to set this variable, and that variable is going to set which animation we're using. So if our speed 600, we're going to be running, and if our speed's 300, we're going to be walking. I'm actually going to make this negative 100, so we can have backwards in there as well, and that's just going to make it uh, easier for us, uh, so that way we don't have to separate. Um, we don't have to separate our animations into anything uh, or into into multiple blocks. It, we can just have hopefully most of our an, our movement animations in this. So walk backwards, we're going to put here. Walk forward, we're going to put here. And I'm going to set up sprinting and stuff later, so uh, don't mind that. And then walk uh, left, we're just going to set all along the side here and then walk right we're gonna do likewise oh. so now if you press and hold shift uh, oh, actually and I also want to get um, idle just for a point of reference here idle rifle iron sights here at zero zero so if i press shift and here i'm at idle you can see i'm at idle i'm not moving the character's not moving the animations are playing as if it were in real time but nothing's actually moving so let's say i were to press s that would and the way we're going to set it up that would make us want to go backwards and so now uh it it's our speeds our speeds negative because we're going backwards and look at that where our character is going to be going backwards. Same thing if we go forward. Now we're going to be going forward. Left is going to take us left. Right is going to take us right. Pretty self-explanatory. I mean, pretty pretty straightforward. But how do we actually get that to transfer into us pressing the keyboard and it happening? Well, first of all, let's save this. So Control Shift S, save everything. And I'm just going to close out of this and go back into our uh, animation blueprint. Now, where we were left off was within our idle state, but you can go back up here, and this is just kind of like a full fire fo file folder would be where you can go back through your folders. It's gonna work just the same way, so I'm just gonna go back to the machine state. And these, uh, the machine state really works like roads if you, don't, uh, if you haven't looked at it. It's pretty much uh, roads to, to different uh, different buildings or stoplights, however you want to call it, because everything's a back and forth. So we're going to create a new state, and I'll, and I'll demonstrate what I mean here. And this one's going to be called, um, uh, we'll just call it walking, because why not? Now we've created a new state that has a, 
a, a line going to it from idle to walking, but it also has something new here that wasn't here before, and this is the transition rule. This is this is the kind of what I was talking about to tell it when we should go back and forth. Well, to go and obviously not all animations have to go back and forth, so you can have some go one way, some go both ways, and this one is going to go both ways because if we stop walking, we want to be able to go back to idle. Now we're going to set up these transition rules later, so don't worry about that, but right now let's just be concerned with walking and getting our blend space in there. So you go over to your asset, br asset browser, and just fun fact, you don't have to drag everything over from the asset browser like I do. I just tend to do that based out of habit. Technically, you can totally right-click and type in whatever file animation you need, and as long as it's uh, correctly, um, as long as you're re referencing an animation that's retargeted to your specific uh, mesh that you're using, the animation will pop up. If it's not, then you know you've got some animation work to do or retargeting and whatnot. But mine popped up, and I could right-click and bring it up just the same. I just tend to use the Asset Browser. Now, here are those two variables that I was talking about that we're going to be using and referencing and modifying, and that's how we're going to get the results we want, direction and speed. Now, of course, they're going to just be called whatever you called them in the in the uh, blend space editor. We're using direction and speed because those are the two uh, variables that are going to be determining uh, what our animation is. So we're going to make those variables uh, local, or they're, we're going to make them variables on this blueprint. And to do that the quick way, uh, I like to right click and uh, promote the variable. And it should have renamed it, but it's not. That's fine. And I don't know why it's opening a new tab like that. And we're going to call it direction. We're going to promote that and call it speed. And it, yep, did that as well. <laughs> speed. Okay, there we go. Now we have direction and speed. Now these aren't being set or modified or touched at all. And uh, we need them to be. Because course once again we want to be running okay so we're going to want to go over to our event graph and the first thing that we're going to want to, to grab is our speed okay so grab off this uh, pawn owner and get velocity and this is just pretty straightforward it's gonna get the velocity of whatever our pawn owner is in this case it's gonna be our character and we just want to create that to uh, create that convert that for lack of a better term into a float uh, but not just any any old way. We're actually going to get vector length. Um, I wish I could do specific explaining as to what this does, but I'm really drawing a, a, a blank here besides the fact that it's it's creating it to, or converting it, man, into a float the way we need uh, it converted into. And then from there, uh, very simply, we can just set speed, and that's it. Now, we also need to get our direction, but the direction is going to be a bit of a different issue. The direction, uh, and let me make sure I'm doing this right, of course. <laughs> We're going to get off of our velocity again, but instead of getting, uh, or getting the vector length, we're going to calculate the direction and set direction there. But there's this base rotation that I have left uh, unattended, and you may be wondering, hey, <laughs> what does that go to? Well, that's actually also an easy one. We're just going to get actor rotation. And uh, that'll do. <laughs> and so that's, that's really it right there. So now what we actually need to do is tell it when it can go to walking. Because it's here, right? Our, our, our information's here, and uh, and we can we can move these variables around. Uh, you know, I could set the direction to 100. I could set the speed to 100. Actually, hold on, it's not letting me edit it, and that's and that's whatever. But even if I were to do that, it actually wouldn't be moving, and that's because we're not telling it that it can move to the next one. So make sure you're getting the the right the right um, path. So we want idle to walking. We want to tell idle when to go walking so we're going to double click that transition path and it's just going to open another grid and all we have here is a bool because obviously we just want to say can we or can we not that's all it needs to know 
We need to figure out whether, however simple or complicated your parameters are going to be uh, for for going to that to that animation is going to be depending on, of course, what you're doing. But for us, we purely just need to know how fast we're going because if we're not go moving at all, we're not going to be walking. So we need to see if our speed is more than we'll just say 100 because our speed shouldn't drop any any lower than 100 unless we're proning but we'll set that stuff up later so if it's more than or equal to 100 go ahead enter it enter the transition but we need to tell it when to not when, when to stop walking as well so go from walking grab your uh walking to idle transition and uh grab speed again and I just realized I should probably be telling you guys the way I'm clicking and dragging so as to not bring up a menu uh, as it would if you just clicked and drag get speed or set speed if you control drag you get if you alt drag you set very simple and that has saved me so much time it's it's not the biggest uh, macro key but it definitely is probably one of the most useful because you're always 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 going to be setting and getting and setting and getting variables almost always so we want to get the speed and if it's less than or equal to zero which obviously it, you know that's uh, how it starts out then head back to walking so now what does that look like well let's take a look it should work And there she is. Now, something that is different here that we're not seeing the left and right is because of how our camera is set up. You can see our camera is not locked to the back of the character like you would want in a third person. This is much more reminiscent of a, a third person shooter uh, or even a um, a uh, like a, a RPG or strategy game or something where you're not really focused on uh, specifically what the player is looking at and we are going to have third person mechanics just for the flexibility of first and third person though we are going to be mostly first person mechanic oriented let me actually just fix uh fix that and um let's see Pawn, um i want this and I believe inherent yaw is the one that we want. Yep, and so that that's what we wanted. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much just kind of telling it, uh, telling the uh, the character movement what to uh, inherit and what not to. So if you were like doing a, a flying, like a, a six axis flying a ship or something like that, you would most likely want to inherit pitch yaw and roll. We're not. We're just we're just doing a character who's going to be walking on the ground. So we just want the yaw. And uh, other than that, all the, nothing else should have to be changed for the camera to lock to the character. And now all I'm doing to move the character around is just move the camera like you would in a first-person or even third-person shooter. And so now we're rock walking left, walking right. Uh, those animations are a bit weird, and I'll take a look as to why. And if we go backwards, oh dear. Well... Did I switch those animations around? That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Nope. It's just being weird. So I will get back to you guys in the next episode as to why exactly it's doing that. And then uh, we'll, we'll give you that solution the next time. But either way, that's going to be your basics for setting up some character movement. And hopefully better understanding what does what and why it does what now here's something that i'm going to just show you guys that's kind of useful for both debugging and useful for understanding how how everything works if you just go to your um, animation blueprint and actually play from here it should open up a uh, standalone preview window window <laughs> window if it doesn't uh, just go to play and uh, let's see what new new wet new editor window PIE um, and you can play in uh, a new editor but I want to kind of just show you guys side by side what it looks like 
when you uh, walk ar walk around. And um, maybe I should actually be uh, previewing this. Hold on. Play, and I don't know. Oh, probably because my monitor is not wide enough. Um, I'm used to working on my ultra wide. I'm going to click on this expand toolbar here and tell it to uh, preview the anim character in BP. This one, since we are playing, this is actually a live preview of the character we're playing as. So you can see the animations, everything that happens to this character happens to our preview editor over here. And another cool thing, it happens to our graph as well. And so you can actually see that our graph is actively uh, uh, walking. And I believe even if we go, uh, no, actually, we can't. All right, sorry, never mind. But uh, you can see now if you have a much more complicated animation graph, you can do that same thing or even same thing in blueprints. If we go over here and tell the debug filter to do the B BP character, which is the, the one that we're uh, playing as right now, the mouse input is constantly running because your mouse is constantly running, but something that's not constantly running is the jump. You can see press and hold, let go. Press, let go. Tap it, and that's and you can see over here that the jump is triggering. Same thing. Same thing if we move since the movement's triggering all the time. Uh, that's just going to be triggering all the time. But it's cool for debugging and a little. Uh, little cool trick if you guys didn't know that well i hope this first episode kind of helped you guys better understand uh, a bit of blueprints a bit of animation and we'll get into more advanced stuff and a lot of the cooler stuff that's um really what you came here for in later episodes but of course you got to start somewhere and you got to get your basics done and that's kind of the slow grind and slog that you sadly have to go to go through excuse me well i really hope you guys did enjoy this episode and of course first episode's never the most exciting we'll get into the better stuff later like i said but do subscribe if you are looking for a full fps slash tps tutorial and random little blueprint tutorials along the way because we're back at it we're gonna start doing tutorials again and and by we i mean i so i hope you guys did enjoy like, subscribe, comment, any suggestions, join the Discord if you guys want a UE4 or just programming community with some nice folk in there. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time. But until then, uh, have fun.